Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is a uh, another one of our clock kits. Actually, this is not one of our designs. This is an, an imported design. Um, I will talk about the functions uh, after we build it. I'm going to show you how to build it in this video. Now, first, I'll give you an introduction of, of what comes with it. You got a 78 LO5 5 volt regulator, uh, eight 4 and 7 or 70 ohm resistors, um, six 4K7 resistors, two 10K resistors, a programmed chip, socket, uh, three dual sets of seven segment displays, a uh, 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, uh, three 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, a 0 0.1 micro, uh, microfarad ceramic capacitor, uh, a battery holder for memory, which is, uh, you don't have to use it, but we'll get to that later, four red LEDs, three, uh, 4148 diodes, the custom PCB, crystal oscillator, um, a two pin terminal block, two 30 picofarad ceramic capacitors for the crystal oscillator, a monetary push switch, and uh, six transistors that act to enable all six of the displays. So, first of all, we're going to uh, solder in our resistors. Uh, all of the resistor um, footprints on the board are well labeled, but I'll go through them. Right here it says 4K7 times 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you want to put your 6 4K7 resistors in these slots. Uh, here, for these slots, it says 470 times 7, so 7 of our 470 ohm resistors will go in these slots, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And your last 4K, 4, uh, 470 ohm resistor goes here in R16. Your two 10K ohm resistors go into uh, go right here. There's the uh, R15 is a 10K ohm resistor and R8 is a 10K ohm resistor. So resistors are not polarized. Doesn't matter which way you place them in, as long as as you're using the right values in the right places. So be very careful when you do that. Once we're done that, we will do the uh, capacitors. After uh, clipping off your resistor leads, you'll know you'll have a lot of uh, leftover pieces of wire. What you want to do is take two of those and, play, and you place one in the J1 slot and the other in the J2 slot. Now those are essentially just bypassing traces. But if you don't place a wire in J J1 for jumper 1 and J2 for jumper 2, your uh, segments will not work. So make sure, they won't work properly anyway. So make sure you do that. Don't forget. Capacitor time. So let's do our electrolytics first because they're, they're a little bit more difficult. Uh, the electrolytic capacitors have a short lead and a long lead, as you can see here. Short lead and a long lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. Your 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor is placed in the C1 slot. The uh, On the top of the footprint there's a plus sign. That's indicating that that side is your positive. So place your long lead in the top side here and your short lead in the bottom side. Now all three of your uh, 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors right here, they all have a long lead and a short lead too. All of the footprints, 1, 2, and 3, have a plus sign on the top, meaning you want to place your long leads in the top slots and your short leads in the bottom slots. Don't uh, turn them around or else you'll pop them when you power it on. The uh, 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, uh, it actually has a 104 label on it, but it's very, very small. It goes in the 104 slot, C4 labeled 104, so it's not uh, it's not polarized, so it doesn't matter which way you place it in. Uh, C2 or C7 and C8 are, are labeled C730, C830 for 30 microfarad. Or sorry, 30 picofarad. Now they're the smallest of the, they're the two really, really small um, ceramic capacitors. You want to make sure you place them in there. No shorts. Be very uh, careful not to do any shorts. Uh, after we solder those into place, what we'll do is we'll do our LEDs and our diodes. Now we're going to do the LEDs. Four LEDs are labeled uh, are, are right here, uh, LED 1, LED 2, LED, and LED 4. Now the LEDs have a uh, short lead and a long lead, similar to the electrolytic capacitors. The long lead is a positive, short lead is a negative. Um, on the footprint, the positive is the bottom side of the triangle. Uh, if you're familiar with, uh, with if, if you can't see it from here, uh, the symbol for an LED is, is a, a triangle with a stripe on, on the pointed end. Uh, now you want the stripe on the pointed end is your negative. So your short lead will go here, uh, and your long lead will go here. Uh, 
so let's just go through LED 1 to LED 4 because they are reversed uh, they are reversed footprints on LED 1 the positive lead goes on the right side and the negative lead goes in the left side so long lead short lead LED 2 uh, the positive is on the left hand side and the negative is on the right hand side so uh, long lead short lead LED 3 uh, positive on the right negative on the left long lead short lead and LED 4 uh, the positive is on the left and the negative is on the right so long lead short lead and for the uh, 1 and 4 1 4 8 diodes now this is a little bit trickier but not much um, there's three of them right here right here and right here D 1 2 3 and uh, if you'll notice, you probably can't see from here, they're a little bit tricky to see. On one side of the diode, there's black, and on the other side, it's just orange. Black is the negative. Now, if you look on, say, this footprint, there's that little notch. That's the indication of the uh, negative. So place the black side facing the notch. Black side facing the notch. Uh, and black side facing the right-hand side for D3, the notch. So, if you turn those around... Uh, you might have some functionality problems, so pay close attention. Black is negative, notch is negative. Anyway, uh, hopefully that's clear enough. Um, solder those into place, and next we'll do the crystal oscillator, the buttons, and the transistors. The crystal oscillator is placed in the Y1 slot. It's labeled Y1 underneath 12M. There's no polarization, just soldered in either way, it doesn't matter. The uh, 7805, now this is very important, when you get your transistors uh, out, make sure you look specifically for the 7805, there's writing on the front, 78L05. Uh, you don't want to mix them up and place the 7805 in one of the Q slots for the transistors, or else your circuit will not work. Very, very important. Segregate them from the transistors from the 78L05. Uh, the 78L05 goes in the I slot IC1 right here, and there's a curved side, and there's a flat side. On the transistor or on the uh, the regulator, there's a flat side from a bird's eye view, and there's a curved side. Make sure that the flat side lines up with the flat side of the footprint, and that the curved side lines up with the back side of the cu curved footprint. You want to make sure that the curves line up with the curves, and the flat sides line up with the flat sides. And that goes for the transistors too. All of the transistors go in Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, and Q6 slots. There's a curved side and there's a flat side. So in this case, every all of the left sides are curved, all the right sides are flat. From a bird's eye view, uh, there's a flat side and a curved side. Line them up from a bird's eye view. Solder those all into place, make sure there's no shorts. They're easy to short, so uh, be very careful. Uh, if you have a segment not working, and when you turn it on, that's likely your culprit. Uh, shorts on either the transistors or the resistors here. Anyway, after you solder those in, solder your button in. Your button goes in the S1 slot for switch 1. It only really fits in one way. Line up the whole, line up the leads, the four leads with the four holes, and click them and click it in, and make sure it's flush to the board and then solder it into place. Next, we'll do our socket and our seven segment displays. Now we're going to do the sockets, or the socket, the, the program controller and the seven segment displays. The so a socket goes into the IC2 slot right here, labeled uh, AT89C2051. Now, uh, you don't have to use the socket. You can, you can just solder the chip into place if you're confident, but it's not. It's it's just for completion of for, you know, solder the solder the uh, the uh, the socket in. Uh, on the left hand side of the socket, there's a notch. Hard to see from here, perhaps, but uh, on the left side of the um, footprint there is a notch from a bird's eye view make sure that the notch in this case goes in facing the left there's also a notch on the microcontroller make sure that that's facing the notch on the socket and on the footprint which in this case is left if you turn that around and power it on you're gonna fry your chip now uh, your seven segment displays you'll notice on the footprints there is a dot in the lower right hand corner for all of them and on the that's and on the uh, seven segment displays there is a dot in the lower right hand corners the decimal points make sure that the dots are facing the dots from a bird's eye view so in this case make sure each one has the dots at the facing the bottom of the board if you turn those around your segments are not going to work very very important make sure to double check this before you solder 
once you solder all those into place, we're going to do our, our last step, which is our um, our terminal block uh, and our batter our uh, CR2032 battery holder. The uh, terminal block has a side with two screw terminals and a side with plastic. Make sure that the screw terminals face outwards. If you have it facing the capacitors, you're not going to be able to wire in your power supply. Now, this is for the battery backup. You don't have to use this battery backup, but if you want a battery for it, it doesn't come with a kit, but you can find one at any dollar store. In fact, you can probably find about five for a dollar at the dollar store. Uh, as you can see from the footprint uh, on the BT-1, the CR2032 battery, uh, there's a, a big kind of bulge at the bottom right here, and it fits in like this from a bird's eye view. Now, if the, so if the two internal leads, the two metal leads, uh, get dislodged in transit, they fit right back in. So don't worry about it. So place those in, solder them into place, and we'll test it. Well, the... Uh, CR2032 battery does not come with the kit. I had one lying around, so I popped it in. And what this does is it'll keep the time for a short period of time after your power off. So if there's a power outage uh, and you have this plugged into, a, say, a 9-volt adapter, uh, and it only goes out for a short period of time, this will keep the time temporarily. If you leave that in for 24 hours, it's going to... This is just keeping the memory of the chip alive. So it's not necessary. You don't need it in there. It will function, but if the power's off... Uh, without the battery in there it won't keep the time you'll have to reset the time if the power goes out like a normal click an alarm clock anyway so let's power it on I'm gonna put nine volts at our input by the way uh, on the uh, power t on the terminal block there's a plus symbol on this side and a negative symbol on this side so supply is uh, seven to nine volts and uh, your negative is your your ground input ground is on the on on this side so I've got a red and black wire connected there so I'm gonna power it on and I was fiddling with it, so it starts at uh, it started started the time I left it at. If you don't do not have uh, that battery in there, if you do not have a battery, which again can be found at the dollar store, it will start at zero zero colon zero zero colon zero zero. So if I want to put in power saving mode, I just click S one once, and if I press it again, it turns time back on. Now if I hold S one, I can change the minute and time will stop. So I, I just, now I don't want to hold it, I can just click, click. So, so let's let's set the time to 15. Okay, so that's 15 minutes. Now I'm going to hold it again and let go. And I'm going to set this to, it's a 24 hour clock, so let's set it to 4.15 p.m and it will start running again. So single clicks will increment the minutes or hours uh, and if you hold the button it will set it into time in time entry mode. So again, uh, so hold the button, let go, I can change the minutes by clicking and then I'll hold the button again and let go and I'll be able to change the hours and it can increment up to 24 because it's a 24 hour clock and it'll go back to zero. So if I, now it's 12:18 in the morning. Anyhow, easy to use, uh, fun to put together, and it's uh, it actually looks cosmetically quite nice. So, uh, what you will receive with this kit is all the parts talked about except for the battery and a power supply, and you'll also get a parts list. Now, the parts list, unfortunately, is in a, is a, there's a, some discussion about how to, how to work it, but it's in Chinese. That's why I made this video. This is an imported kit, imported kit. So. Uh, but you will be able to use the parts list, but if you follow along along with this video, you will not need any of that. Anyhow, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contest, contact us uh, through engineeringshock.com or electroniclessons.com. Uh, again, this can be found at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. Take care, everyone, and thanks for watching.